What's going on guys? I'm Jendo with Combat Sports UK and this is your Cage Warriors 141 preview show. Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the body here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. We'll jump straight into it by getting Therese McEwen, who is ahead of his fight with Kingsley Crawford this weekend, and he has massive aspirations in the sport. I spoke with Reese not only about Cage Warriors aspirations, but UFC aspirations as well, and also getting some work in with Jack Shore and the team over at Shore MMA. This is a chat that I think you guys will enjoy. Joining me now is Reese McEwen right ahead of his fight with Kingsley Crawford next week, July 22nd for Cage Warriors. How are you feeling, man? Look like you're in good spirits as always. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling great. On top of the world. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Thanks. How are you? I'm feeling fantastic, man. Ready to go. Ready for uh, this exciting summer to continue. How, how are you feeling ahead of your second fight with Cage Warriors, man? Any differences in this camp? Obviously, you've been training some fun places, Shore MMA, doing some fun things. How, how's this camp been for you? It's, it's, it's been great, to be honest. Like, uh, obviously, I came off that one in April, and I just kind of um, I went back to the gym, improved on what I, I addressed, what I had to improve on, and uh, built, on all my, built on my strengths, built on my weaknesses. And um, again, this is just uh, step, to, step two in my Cage Warriors contract and my Cage Warriors journey. So um, now that the, the first fight on the Cage Warriors contract was all about proving that I belonged there. Uh, and now this fight is about uh, taking over the division. Well, Cage Warriors is known to not exactly hand out easy fights, but I don't think many have debuted against someone like Sam Spencer and then their second fight fought someone like Kingsley Crawford. You've always spoken about how you want to win gold and not only in Cage Warriors, you have very big aspirations in terms of UFC dreams and everything like that. But is that so? So is that just kind of natural for you to fight these guys this early into your Cage Warriors fighting days? So, uh, Kingsley Crawford in your second fight is a steep, steep climb for most. Yeah, like, like I'm not fighting. I'll be honest. I'm not fighting for anything other than to test myself. See when my career is all said and done, I'll sleep at night knowing that I gave it my absolute all. If I achieve the goals that I set out to achieve, brilliant. I know in sport and I know in mixed martial arts that there's so many things that can get taken out of your hands that it's it's not easy. Like you could be the best fight in the world, but you might not get your break, you might get hit with injuries, whatever. Like I'm I'm not gonna bore into that detail, but it's so hard to 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 make it. But I'll sleep at night knowing that I gave everything to achieve every like achieve the goals that I set out. So from day one, as my very first fight, I've never taking a fight where I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this just for an easy win. I'm doing this just to walk over. I've always seeked out the toughest tests. As an amateur, I've done it. And as a professional, I'm doing it now. I feel I'm one of the best fighters in Europe. I want to test myself against the best fighter in Europe best fighters in Europe. The best fighters in Europe are in Cage Warriors. I'm gonna come I'm gonna come across them. When a fight gets offered, the promotion comes to my manager, my manager comes to me with a fight. I'm gonna take it. Like I'm here to prove like to prove not how good I am, to prove that I'm one of the best fighters in Europe and the, what's the worst that can happen? Right. I put my goals out there for everyone to hear. Right. When I achieve it, it makes it that much more satisfying. And see, again, realistic here. It might not happen. And if it doesn't happen, who cares? I still had that goal. That's not going to change it. I'm not going to shy away from what I want to achieve. Not getting there in the end doesn't necessarily mean that the fuel shouldn't still be there but hey there's not many people who can acknowledge the pos the endless possibilities really of, of sports in general and mma being a combat sport and a sport where you're, you're fighting somebody someone's trying to rip your limbs off there's so many variables right but you're at nearly the highest level i'd say the highest level in terms of regional mma and it's not really regional is it because cage warriors is, is massive they're they're taking over to the entire european scene right now and you're facing a, a guy who's, who's who's fought top tier talent that speaks volumes as to what Cage Warriors thinks of you. How is your uh, how has your experience been with Cage Warriors now going into your second fight? Superb, like to be honest, superb. And like I said, like I do think that 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 does speak volumes of the the potential or what they believe in me to give me a fight like this because the matchmaker Ian Dean doesn't just match fights for the sake of matching fights. It puts top fights together not even including myself but you always see like there's always a reason for the the matchmaking that he does and it's he's always complimented about how good of a matchmaker he is so i know that 
he's not just putting this fight lightly, yeah, this together lightly. <laughs> I'm trying to get in his head there, but um, it, it definitely shows that they've got a lot of belief in me and they've got a lot of belief in the matchup. But Cage Warriors have been incredible to work with um, when I've been there and also um, in the lead up to both fights. They've been absolutely superb. Uh, and it's a, pre- it's a pleasure and privilege to be fighting for them. With yourself obviously shooting for the Cage Warriors Championship, how many fights in would you like to get that title fight? Obviously, that's out of your hands, but you've got to have this visualization process, right? Even if it doesn't happen, what what is that? What does your brain see? When I got my contract, I got the five fights sent to the five fight contract offer. I said to my manager, I said, I'll be the champ by the end of that contract. But I said, by the end, and he said, we'll get there before. So that's again a pathway that I'm thinking. Before hey. that, these the fourth one let's get a title fight let's fifth one let's get a title defense yep that's exactly what i'm looking at like again right that's my goals i'm not gonna shy away from i'm not that's a conversation i had privately with my manager and that's a conversation i've had with my coaches but i'm letting you all know like that's that's why i'm here to to test to to test myself and to be at the top of the division where i feel i belong so how how was it being at shore mma it had to been nice to train with someone like Jack Shore, who is a top 15 ranked UFC bantamweight. And if, if sessions went well there, obviously that adds even more fuel to the fire, more confidence into you. Yeah, absolutely. Like you're training with the likes of Jack Shore and Brett, Jack Shore and Brett Johns was, was an amazing learning experience. Like these are two guys that I've seen, I've literally seen and watched and achieve, watched them achieve everything that I want to achieve. They've been there. They've been the Cage Warriors champ. They've went on to the UFC, they've went on to Belter, they've done it all, right? And then before you know it, you're on sharing the mats with them, asking them questions face to face, wrote training every day with them. It's an absolute it was an absolute brilliant experience. And the the, the gym doesn't just stop at the two. The gym across the board is full of amazing people and amazing training. Um I've been there, I, I went twice. I went six weeks ago, roughly, and then I went last week. Uh, and in total, I think I basically spent like ne- just over two two and a half weeks here uh, and the training was incredible and i made a lot of good friends too what do you got to say about shaky man uh shaky sure i'm speaking with him shortly uh obviously jack's fighting this weekend so got to get a chat in when i can but what, what do you got to say about richard i mean he's a spectacular coach out there oh yeah I, I, again i i an outstanding coach and an outstanding person um he, he was one of those people that when he says something you just instantly respected what he said and it was like, like when he was teaching, like not everybody can have that effect that when they teach, you trust what they say straight away. And it's almost like when he says like, I will done or like ask you for a round or maybe ask you to go in spar with Jack or whatever it may be. You're like, yeah, like, oh, wow. Like, it's almost like you kind of got his approval. And uh, I had that respect for him as soon as I met him. And the first thing he said to me when I arrived there, the first trip was we're going to do some sparring, no egos, like just spar, whatever. And it kind of that's always stuck with me that how much of an amazing environment this gym was because everyone says that no egos, the other one, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, everybody says this. No, it was genuine. Like, you're you're there to get better, you're there to improve, and you're there to help one another and be part of a team. And I that was said to me from from day one, uh, and I was I, I was I was like already after day one, I was like, I can't wait to come back here, and I've still got another week. Um, but yeah, like right, Richards. Uh, an incredible coach and an incredible person well no egos runs deep for anybody who doesn't know uh richard shore also a heavy hand in cage warriors academy Wales, so it, it goes it goes deep with what he does man he not only coaches these guys he's putting fights together and he's doing spectacular with cage warriors academy Wales. and if you speak to the younger talent which i wanted to ask you about as well what do you think of the younger talent but if you speak of the younger talent it's all the same way. Guys like Levi Bachelor, Rowan Crocker just won the Four Nations at middleweight. Um, there's there's some real talent there. What do you think of the young guys uh, performing out of, of shore MMA? They're absolute monsters. I, I actually stayed at Rowan's house um, the last time, at that type, that trip there, uh, and I trained with Levi the first time that I went through. Um, but again, top and bottom, that gym's full of top, top talent, and not just, like, talent, people who are working hard, and when you speak to these guys, it's as if they've been around the game for, like, 10 years, do you know what I mean? It's and they're because kids, of, a lot of them are kids, man. Uh, yeah, exactly, so, uh, yeah, th- there's a lot of good good prospects coming out of Shore MMA, and that Cage Warriors Academy Wales show is going to be incredible, like, because from top to bottom, from the amateurs, 
um, right through to the professionals. Anyone that represents your MMA, they're, they're beasts. And man, just to jump back to your, yourself just a little bit, if all goes according to plan, how do you get it done next weekend against Kingsley Crawford? I'm an up your mental switch where you said if, and I'm saying when, like when it does all go to plan. Like that's just like I caught. That's just like uh, my mindset, like uh, confidence at the moment. Uh, again, we 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 go in, we go win the fight, we make a statement, and then we go speak to Cage Warriors and see what direction they want for me next. That's that's how we that's how we do business. That's how we do business. It's uh, whoever's next. It, it doesn't matter as long as it's on the pathway to gold, Reese. Thank you so much, man. Always a good chat with you. Hope to speak to you again soon. Thank you so much for your time, and thanks to everyone for listening. A smooth transition now because, hey, why not speak to Reese's latest opponent, Sam Spencer, who's also in action this weekend. Sam was a little bit brighter this time around considering, hey, he wasn't so uh, late in the weight cut. A little bit earlier on this time, it was a great chat and really, really fun every time I speak with Sam. Look forward to the next one, and I think this is a fight that you'll want to keep your eyes on. Um, but we'll take it from the mouth of Sam because I, I believe Sam did a better job of selling it than I could. Joining me now, smooth Sam Spencer, coming off that dazzling fight against Reese McEwen, getting ready to go in there with Adam Amarasinghe uh, again uh, this weekend. How are you feeling, Sam, ahead of – I mean, we're just a few days away now. No, next weekend. It's next weekend. Oh, it, is, it is. It is. Next Friday. Friday. Next Friday. Don't, don't scare me like that. We've still got a week yet. Oh uh, yeah, no, no, I, I mistaked. I'm uh, can, do you mind if I just do that with the the yeah, whole reentry? Run, Sorry, it's been a it's been a it fun back. one. Yeah, run it back, bro. The twenty second, yeah, because I'm gonna be at Bellator actually on that day. Funny enough, right? Okay, awesome. Joining me now is Sam Spencer, just a few days out from Cage Warriors 141, which takes place July the 22nd. How are you feeling, man? How's this fight camp been for you? I know uh, you, you just said it was a good one. Yeah, it's been a nice one. Been a nice one. Like I said before, the uh, the weight was my only issue. It wasn't coming down like always, but then two weeks out, magically it starts dropping off. So, yeah, it's uh, I not not had any issues. I felt good in my round. Been getting good rounds all over the the northwest. Started the camp in Dubai as well, so I've been been getting some some rounds all over the place. Um, I was watching your uh, your stories through Dubai, man. It seemed like that was a heck of a, a heck of an experience. What do you got to say about Dubai as, as a whole from uh, what you just did in your last trip? Yeah, it was good, man. The training was the training was mega. The food was too good. That's why the weight was an issue. The food was ridiculous. But uh, the training was was great. Like, um, I was training at Strong MMA with um, with, with Milano as the head coach there. Um, really good rounds, good grapplers, good strikers, good MMA guys there. And then all over, like, the UAE, there's a massive, like um, – they absolutely love jiu-jitsu like they teach it on the school curriculum there in certain in some of the high schools and stuff like obviously adcc is based out there so there's like mega grapplers like from a jiu-jitsu point of view and then there's a huge russian influence as well so like from like the caucus regions there's loads of loads of wrestlers that get into jiu-jitsu so it's it's like a bit of a hotbed of of like especially grappling sports but starting to become mma as a whole now it's meant it's just such a good place for for uh, combat sports different experience right it's gonna be it's gonna be one of these places that really uh is a hotbed of talent it already is but for the future as well yeah there's not so many like uh, homegrown guys that that train and fight out of there like there's not a lot of emirati guys or um arab guys that are, that are competing at high levels just yet but i imagine in the next five ten years there's going to be like a big a big boom of guys over there because there was so many guys training there there's like I was jumping into the grappling classes and there's like six or seven black belts that are all under 30 on the mat. So I was like, like how, how they're not doing MMA. I don't know. Like how there's not a big MMA scene over there. I don't know, but there's um, loads and loads of guys that move out there to, to coach and to train and to fight out there. So they, they tend to like the Emirati guys seem to get behind Westerners that go out there and move out there and compete out of, out of Dubai. So, and, and Abu Dhabi. So I feel like there's, there's going to be a big growth. Of the sport over that neck of the woods yeah i agree with you as well man but just to switch gears a little bit to yourself how good does it feel to have activity back i know i know it was hard for you to be inactive for so long how does it feel to just this is your second fight now in just a few months yeah it's nice it's been a while since i've done something like that like i had three years out before that last one before that fight before i had the three years out i had another 18 months out before that as well so like it's been a mad run of stupid injuries but um yeah, it's it's nice to get the ball back rolling and try and build some momentum because like you'll speak to anyone in this sport that momentum is is key. 
like your timing your timing drops off if you have a few months out never mind if you have a few years out so um yeah it's, it's nice to be back up to game speed again and it's a big card. It's a it's a big card, a tough opponent, right? I mean, you've got guys like Jim Wallhead up on the main card, which is going to be interesting to see him back with Cage Warriors. Yeah, Nick legends. Stanton, former champ. I mean, your your last opponent, Reese McEwen, as well. It's a loaded card. What does it say? Or how do you feel to be going out there for a card like this that really is going to put some uh, some butts in seats, man? Yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be good. I think it's the twentieth anniversary as well, the Cage Warriors twentieth anniversary. So they're making a little like a big deal out of that. Um, the card, if you look at the card top to bottom, every fight is a banger. Like there's there's not a not a dry fight on it. There's not a fight that you could imagine not being exciting. Like I, I've been doing a lot of training with the guys at Next Gen in Liverpool, and you got Nathan Fletcher and Luke Riley both on the card both sick bantamweights. Well, Luke's uh, moving up to featherweight actually, so we've got like. Nathan at bantamweight, myself at bantamweight, Luke at, at flyweight, all like exciting fighters. Nathan obviously fought for the title. All the way up, to, I think we'll be opening the card, we'll be pretty early on the card, maybe the undercard, and then all the way through the main cards, sick fights. So I'm hoping to get in and out, get the job done, get in the crowd, get a beer in me and uh, watch the rest of the card, I think. So do you think you can, you can get a couple more this year? Definitely one. I thought all touch wood, all goes to plan and not no injuries or anything. And um, I'd, I'd love to fight again this year. I think yeah, like I said, I've been out for too long. I'm not getting any younger, so I need to be um, need to be making some moves now. I think this is the time. Like whilst whilst there's no injuries and whilst, like whilst the ball's rolling, keep it rolling. That's that's my uh, my approach to the rest of the year. So yeah, at least one, if not two. So before I let you go, man, I got to touch on a teammate now. Tom Wright recently won yeah. the FCC Amateur Bantamweight Championship. You were there for uh, for Predators. Right. You were in you were in quite a few corners. How was your experience uh-huh. there? And uh, what do you got to say about Tom, man? It's nice to see him get a belt, and he looks like he's going. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a mega journey. Like me and Tom went to we went to primary school together. We've known each other our whole lives. Like um, he got into MMA a bit later than me. Like uh, he started training just as I was on like turning pro around that time. So about six years ago, something like that, six seven years, and um, been with him every step of the every step of the way. He's been like with me. I've been with him, kind of thing. So <clears throat> it's meant to see him go through the ups and downs, wins, losses, tough fights, tough fights, hard fights, quick finishes, all this like everything. He's had like an, an amateur career that's done like a roller coaster. Like, yeah, a serious roller coaster, and he's only fought good guys. Like he's only fought the best guys in the country. Guys, guy, you know, guys like like Axworthy, like Walsh like uh, Marlon Jones, you know, Jake Grundy, all these boys, they're all good amateurs, solid amateurs. So, like, he's, um, to see him get that belt, see him get that win in the way he did, like, looking so so well-rounded, composed, so dominant, winning every round pretty much, it all made up for him, absolutely made up for him because he, um, he's put the graft in. He has put the graft in over the last however many years. So, now he's, we're just looking at opponents for him now um, to turn pro and make his professional debut probably probably looking at shows like FCC as well to get to get him turning pro on there as well, making his way towards Cage Warriors, PFL, Bellator, UFC, the sky, you know, the sky's the limit for Tom because he's, uh, he's got serious natural abilities. Is it fair to say that coaching is in your future, my man? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. It goes, it goes without saying it. has been like for, for years. Anyway, I started, Gav, was, Gav, the head coach at Predators, was um, he looked after me when I first left uni six, seven years ago. He said like, we had a chat and it was like, I was saying to him, like, I want to turn professional, but I don't know how I'm going to finance it. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't really want to work like a, a full-time job and try and fight professionally. So he, he was like very supportive about getting me in coaching, teaching one-to-ones, teaching privates, teaching a few kids classes here and there at the gym. Taught me like, there'd be times where I'd be teaching privates and Gav, I'd have to be like, Gav, like, how do I how do I teach this technique or that technique? Because I was like I was pretty early in my own career, you know what I mean. But like it it made me a it allowed me to be in the gym full time, and I I, I do I, I love coaching. Like I love, love talk, coaching um teen, you know teenage lads that don't know if they're gonna become fighters or not. Like trying to trying to te- teach them the ways and keep them on a straight and narrow and all that kind of stuff. And then teaching teaching guys that might never fight as well older guys you know businessmen all this kind of stuff women housewives that will never become fighters but they just want to get fit and and learn some self-defense yeah i love it i love it i'd love to open a gym one day i think that'll i'm pretty sure that'll be definitely part of my future but but not yet i've got some got some business to do first what a life you live sam so happy to see you active again really hoping to see some big things in your future thank you so much for giving me the time so man bro thank you
Steve Amable is a name that's been around for so long, and he's back in there this weekend. Can't wait to speak to Steve again after the fight, but really just excited to see the fight this weekend. Steve is always a fun one. He's never had a boring fight, and with as many fights as he's had through his career, that is, that is a feat in and of itself. I'm going to shoot it off to Steve. Let's see what he had to say. Joining me now is Steve Amable on a three-fight win streak going into a fight that could put him into the next level, really, in terms of what could be to come. Steve, how are you feeling just a week and a half out from next weekend? Yeah, I feel, I feel really good, to be fair. It's been um, a bit longer of a layoff compared to what I'm normally used to. But, you know, um, back into the swing of it, I feel like I did when I just before the last fight. And, um, yeah, I'm ready to go. You fought some of the top talent in Cage Warriors, Paul McBain, Decky McAleen, and Jordan Vucenic, Mads Burnell. I mean, now you're on a three-fight win streak. This would make it four. Say you get the job done here. You're you're looking towards titles now, aren't you? Yeah, it should be. With this win, it should put me, you know, back in the position I was um, before I fought Mads Burnell. You know, when I fought Mads, I was on a four-fight win streak. Um, it's taken two years to get back to that position again. Um, so yeah, there's no one else in the division that's, you know, will be in the same position as me. So how are you feeling now in comparison to your other long win streak, right? This is three going for four before it was four and that's where it was held. How can you compare these two streaks? Um, this, this streak, I don't feel, you know, as, as though I'm putting as much pressure on myself, um, you know, I feel that's what really messed me up leading into that fight. You know, I was just overthinking everything. I was looking past Matt Spinell and uh, thinking of the bigger picture rather than what was ahead of me. And, you know, it, it messed up the whole fight camp and everything like that. So since then, I've sort of just taken the pressure off and just said, you know, if I lose, I lose sort of thing. Um, it is what it is. Just, you know, just carry on and... Uh, I, f- I feel you can see it in my, p- my performances. Um, and, yeah, there's just this this win streak's um, a lot nicer. It's a ni- nicer place to be in than the last one. Have you put any thought into if you may fight again this year, once, twice, or anything into what's next year? Are you just full, uh, full focused on what's at hand, really, for next weekend? Um, no. I've said all along I'd like to get another one in by the end of the year. Um I normally will go for two or three a year, depending on obviously injuries and stuff like that. So if I can squeeze in another one by the end of the year, um, that that you know make me happy, and then try and get another three in for next year, um, and then that'll be my five fights, my contract up, you know, um, and then obviously we can see where we go from there. And it could be some interesting phone calls coming in soon. Again, very impressive win streak against impressive opposition. Looking at your opponent, right? What what do you think you could really expose and take advantage of in the cage? Um, just my my striking, you know, his striking is nowhere near the level of mine. Um, he's, you know, he's known he's known as a wrestler. Um, my wrestling, my wrestling's good, so you know, it's just you know, if I want to take him down, I'm going to take him down. Um, all he's got against me is takedowns. So I can take him down. I can strike him. I can do whatever I want. He's he's sort of one dimensional, so. Um, it's, for me, you know, it's a really good fight for me. Um, obviously, he's putting himself in such a great position, you know, fighting me. Um, you know, he wins this fight and, uh, you know, I mean, he's leapfrogged everyone sort of thing and put in, you know, put himself in a great position, but that's not going to happen, so... So what do you see being the result in this one? Obviously, maybe you don't want to give away specifics, but do you think you find a finish in the cage? Yeah, yeah. You know, everyone always goes for a finish. Um, but, yeah, my le- my level of striking compared to his and stuff, um, yeah, I, I feel like I could finish him. Um, if I don't finish him on the feet, you know, in my, my last fight, I hit my first ever sub as a pro. So, uh, first sub in 10 years. So, who knows? I might, I might finish him on the sub. You never know. Let's see what happens. Steve, thank you so much. For those who don't know, Steve has moved the times around, moved the days around, been as flexible as can be. You've got fans in our in this corner, man. What do you have to say before we let you go? 
Um, just, you know, thanks for everyone for the, all the support. Tune in. Um, I'm never in a boring fight. Um, you know, my fight's always pretty much one of the best on the card. So watch my fight. Enjoy the rest of the fights as well. And uh, give me a follow. One of the biggest fights on a massive card. Steve Amable, thank you so much. Finally, let's close with the man at a next gen. It's going to be Nathan Fletcher in action this weekend. Coming off of his first ever loss, it was to Dom Wooding. Now looking to compete with a 30-some fight vet. International opponent, big stage. Nathan Fletcher is ready. I'm going to shoot it off to him, and, and let's wrap this one up. Joining me now is Nathan Fletcher, fighting out of Next Gen MMA, one of the most impressive seven-fight pro resumes you'll see. Coming off his first loss to Dominique Wooding, but with Wooding going to the Contender Series, there's obviously no shame in that. How are you feeling, man, just a couple of days out from this one? I'm feeling very good. Um, I'm itching to get back in there now. This has been the longest layoff I've had uh, in my pro career. It's been 10 months since my last fight. Um, so... I just can't wait to get back in there now. The camp's gone perfect. The preparation's been good. I've done a lot of growing these past 10 months. Do you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm excited to get back in there now and showcase the new version of myself and um, just put on display everything that I've learned from that last fight and um, from my pro career so far. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I've really stepped up my game now uh, in terms of everything, in terms of skills, composure, experience. Um, so I'm very excited to get in there and display all of that in just over a week's time. You know, we say that you're at the best that you've ever been. And looking at your your fight record, though, you beat Callan Lauchran in the amateurs. You beat Jack Eglin in the amateurs. 4-0 pro in your debut. Kieran Mulholland afterwards. You have not had an easy fight. And now, hey, after the longest layoff, let's jump in and fight someone with almost 40 fights. How did that come to be? Yeah, uh, I was just cage warriors, do you know what I mean? I, I've had a lot, of my, uh, a lot of my amateur fights were on the cage warriors shows, on the prelims there. And obviously, all of my pro fights have been on cage warriors, so... I haven't, um, I haven't taken the, the common route of building my record on smaller shows and fighting the odd journeyman here and there. Do you know what I mean? I've, as soon as I turned pro, I was fighting legit competition. Uh, even when I was amateur, I was fighting tough guys. So I was preparing well for, for the pros in my amateur career. And then, like I said, I've been on Cage Warriors seven fights now. So no, um, there's no easy fights on Cage Warriors. Do you know what I mean? And I wouldn't want easy fights because I'm going to the UFC. Do you know what I mean? That's my goals in this sport. And um, I feel like... I've had the best preparation in the lead up to that. Do you know what I mean? So when I do get signed, it's not going to be a big step up in level. It's not going to be a big surprise because, like I said, I've been on Cage Warriors for the past over many years now doing my thing. So um, I'm glad. I'm glad that I've had all these tough fights. It's uh, it's the path I wanted to take. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So Cage Warriors promotionally is definitely a great approach. How much does it help to have the gym approach as well? Because, yeah, Next Gen is loaded, but especially in your lower weight classes, you've got the UFC big stars and, and Patty. You've got guys like Camilleri who are making a, an impact, and they've got different offenses. You've got even guys like Shem Rock who recently came over. How are, how are you doing in the gym, man? How, is, how, uh, how important is it to have the bodies you have around the same weight class right at your home, really? Yeah, obviously, it's ideal. Do you know what I mean? Next Gen's packed full of talent, uh, and especially in the, the lighter weight classes, like you say. So even from literally sort of featherweight down to flyweight, that's probably our busiest weight class. I, don't, you know I only I mean? named some gym. big boys. Yeah, I only named some of the big, yeah. big boys. Yeah, so we've got him. Um, obviously, like you say, Cam he's a featherweight. He's a big featherweight, though, big, strong guy. Shem's come to the gym now. He's been a good training partner for me like, the last few weeks since he's been here. Again, a little bit on the big side, but... Um, Still mix it in well with him. But we've got the likes of myself, Luke Riley, obviously, who's also on Cage Warriors fighting past Aspect of the year last um, year, Luke Riley. Exactly, yeah. So he took that title from me. I was the former I was the former <laughs> prospect of the year. Two years running, and then it was between Cullen and Luke last year, so that they were both up for that. And, and Luke got that one. So we've got Luke. We've got Connor Wilson, uh, who's a pro flyweight, very high level. You know what I mean? He's one of my main training partners. Um, Liam Gittins, also on Cage Warriors, another bantamweight. Do you know what I mean? So the list goes on and on, the amount of the uh, smaller guys we've got in the gym. And then the likes of Sam Spencer, Tom Wright, who won the bantamweight title the other week, they've been coming down and training with us, you know, a few times a week as well. So the maps really are packed. And then um, e even from the guys I've mentioned there, it's not even, you know, the, the top names that you think of in our gym, like Paddy and Molly and, and all the Cage Warriors stars, right down to the amateurs that come in the gym. We've got, um, we've got stacked mats, so I'm getting the best training possible. I, I had assumed so. Not only the the bodies, but the coaching staff as well. The coaching staff has come so far and grown. 
Um, and having having fighters on or people on the coaching staff, but coaches now that have been fighters before is huge. You see it so much in the UFC now with high level fighters transitioning into high level coaches. But man, more onto this fight itself, right? How how do you feel fighting an international opponent? Uh, looking at your fight record, I believe you have fought in a couple before. And as you said, Cage Warriors is the toughest of the tough. But uh, you, it's not too often we see a thirty six fight vet in Cage Warriors, and it's I mean, looking at his record, it's it's it it lines up twenty five and eleven. Yeah, You've got seven fights. You wouldn't really assume to see anyone with seven fights coming into this fight. So what do you want to prove? in there in the cage this weekend coming off the loss to Wooding, you know, there's, there's been people saying some things that way, way back. I mean, right after the fight, obviously anyone's going to say something after a loss, yeah. but what would it mean to you to take out a vet with almost 40 fights and just show, Hey, I'm, I'm still here. I, I got six finishes to my name and I just lost one of the best prospects out there. I'm, I'm coming. Yeah. A million percent. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't care about, you know, proving anything to anybody else other than myself. Do you know what I mean? Like after that last fight, there was the odd few people chirping in, you know, certain fighters, maybe, who were saying stuff about me. They were, they were waiting in the woodwork because I was winning, you know what I mean? I was beating everyone in emphatic fashion. And you could tell they were just waiting there just for me to slip up once um, so they could get the two cents in there and, and give me a load of shit. Um, but that means nothing to me, do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I, I'm concerned with myself. I know my own sort of moral compass. I go off I go off that. I know what I'm about. I know what I'm capable of. I know the level I'm at. And this fight's more about just proving to myself what I already know, do you know what I mean? That I can get back in there get right back on track and just continue the path that I was on, really. Uh, I've got a great opponent to do that because I'm getting a test. Like, you know, a lot of guys will come off a, a loss and want, you know, a bit of an easy fight to coast and, and get back into it. But obviously I've got someone with 36 pro fights here. This guy was fighting pro when I was in year seven of secondary school. So I was starting my first year. You're only school, you're two yeah. months older than me. You're two months older than me. So when this guy started fighting, we were 11, 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy, isn't it? So... Um, yeah, it's a good test. I think level wise, I know where I'm at. Do you know what I mean? So I, I think I'm miles above above, above him in terms of skill. Uh, obviously, he's experienced, but he hasn't fought on a show like Cage Warriors before. And I'm very experienced fighting on Cage Warriors. I grew up on Cage Warriors. My amateur career was on Cage Warriors. So um, I'm very prepared. I'm very excited to go in there, showcase what I'm about, and prove to myself. Do you know what I mean? That I know, I know that what I think is right, and I don't really care what what anybody else has to say about me. Um, you're always going to get haters, aren't you? You've got haters, you're doing something right. So it was good to see after that last one, all these people coming out the woodwork and giving me a bit of shit. Um, that just adds fuel to the fire. Do you know what I mean? So heading over, you're, you're no stranger to the limelight, man. He's coming into your home in, in a sense. So how do you make sure that you get the job done? And what are your final words in closing as to why fans should watch this fight? I get the job done the same way I always do. I'm going to go in there and put pressure on him, put a, put a high pace. Uh, this fight's three rounds. You know what I mean? The last time I was in there, I was getting ready for 25 minutes. So my gas tank is unlimited for 15 minutes. So I'm going to go in there, put the pressure on him early, and you can guarantee it's going to be a finish. Like the rest of my wins, you know what I mean? So the fans, um, they can expect that high pace, an aggressive start, and a fast finish. So um, you don't want to miss this one. It's the return fight. It's where everyone gets back on the bandwagon now. And um, so it's going to be exciting and I can't wait to get in there. The return fight for you, man, could be lucky finish number seven, lucky win number seven, big things to come. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks for having me on, mate. Nice to speak to you. Thank you so much to all of our guests. Once again, another Cage Warriors a preview show in the books. Cage Warriors 141 this weekend is going to be a special event. Hopefully you guys tune in. And hey, on behalf of Combat Sports UK, this is Jendo. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this preview. Hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Not only Cage Warriors, we're on the regional scene as well. We've got plenty of content coming out. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, drop a comment. On behalf of Combat Sports UK, this is Jendo signing off. Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the body here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK.